Before I took a recent trip to the island of Jamaica in the Caribbean, I will admit that I somewhat naively assumed that the Creole languages were simply dialects of the English language and that I would more or less be able to understand what the locals were saying. And it's safe to say that after spending a week there, I no longer think that. But just what are these Creole languages and who are the Creole peoples? A rather loosely defined term that can be applied to many people groups of many different shapes and sizes around the world, although there is a common thread between all these groups that give them their various identities, culture, language, religion, and gene pool. One of my much older videos involves the group known as the Louisiana Creoles and their relation to the other Franco-descended people group of Louisiana that they are frequently confused for, the Cajuns. And even then, by judging by the comments, many Americans still have trouble agreeing on the correct terminology behind the term Creole, and when applying this to a global scale, this becomes even more convoluted. But in today's video, we will be looking through some of the history behind and phraseology of the various Creole peoples of the world, each of whom have a unique origin. Essentially, the Creole people groups of today and the past are defined by their multicultural heritage, with nearly all Creole identifying groups today being an amalgamation of a multitude of ethnic or racial groups, and hence are rarely ever tied to purely one group in particular, with Creoles also being characterized by their rather artificial origins, as rather than being the result of groups splitting or fusing, for instance in the case of the English, who are a combination of millennia of mixing between Romans, Celts, and Germanic tribes, the ethnogenesis of Creoles is usually the result of specific cases of human migration, often brought about by colonialism or in some cases pure chance. Now groups that are identified as Creoles are typified by their usage of Creole languages, and although every Creole language has a different origin, by definition Creole languages are a corruption of the original parent language or languages brought about by various generations adding to and simplifying the vernacular of the language, very oftentimes borrowing the lexicon or syntax from others. The most common way for Creole languages to have formed throughout the world has its origins in the sub-Saharan African slave trade along with European colonialism as many slaves from West and Central Africa being brought to the Americas learned English or another European language, although clearly their fluency would have been less than perfect and upon teaching this broken form of English to their children, the language would have evolved and mutated over the generations to the point where the result bears little resemblance to the language that gave birth to it. So basically think of Creole languages as what would happen if someone read an entire English dictionary over a game of telephone only on a much larger scale, while also sprinkling in some words that aren't even of English origin, as it's not uncommon for Creole languages to incorporate elements of their original African languages or even other Indo-European or Amerindian languages. In Jamaica, the Patois or Creole spoken there had a syntax that reminded me of West African languages, while the vocabulary was clearly based on English and I could perhaps understand every second or third word spoken with great difficulty. Although, most likely due to the permeation of American media and tourists, native Jamaicans seem to have little difficulty understanding myself. Although European languages such as English and French are the most common creolized languages because of the vast colonial influence of these two powers, the truth is any language can evolve into a creole given the right circumstances. Other creolized languages include Portuguese, such as Cape Verdean Creole and Papiamentu, spoken in the ABC Islands and the Caribbean, along with Arabic, including several Arabic-based Creoles scattered throughout Africa, and even Indian languages, as the bulk of the inhabitants of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands speak a Creole form of Hindi with significant Bengali and Tamil influence. Some have even argued that Afrikaans, the Germanic language spoken by the majority of white and mixed-race South Africans, is in itself somewhat a Creole language due to the heavy influence of French, English, and indigenous African languages such as Zulu on the modern Afrikaner lexicon being quite distinct from its parent language of Dutch. However, by and large today, the bulk of Creole languages are spoken in the Caribbean as the large number of African slaves brought to the region in the past has created the perfect microcosm for the four formation of these new languages and cultures. Because these islands switched hands so many times, there are some interesting linguistic quirks, such as in Dominica and St. Lucia, where a large segment of the population still speaks a French Creole language, similar to Martinique and Guadalupe, despite gaining independence from the United Kingdom most recently and having English as their official language. 
Of particular note is that Creole languages may or may not be mutually intelligible with each other, with, for instance, the English-based Creoles of the Caribbean spoken in Jamaica, Trinidad, Barbados, and others being close enough to be mutually intelligible, although they may not understand an English Creole speaker from another area of the planet, such as in Africa or Asia. Now that we discuss the Creole languages, which literally anyone can speak, who are the Creole peoples? They are a much more loosely defined term that varies extremely from region to region, as for instance in the southern U.S. the term Creole has been used to describe both European-descended Cajuns and the mixed-race Louisiana Creoles, while in a country like Liberia and Sierra Leone, the term Creole, derivative of Creole, is used to describe those who are descendants of former black American and Afro-Caribbean slaves who gained their freedom and made their way back to Africa in the 19th century, who contained comparatively more European output than native West Africans, yet would probably not identify as a multiracial group. The Creole-speaking peoples of the Caribbean vary greatly, with Jamaican, Belizean, and Guyanese Creole speakers generally being of predominantly African ancestry, with a European component comparable to that of black Americans, perhaps hovering at around 15 to 20 percent, and much smaller numbers of Amerindian, Chinese, or even South Asian input. Because of their unique history, Haiti makes the distinction of having the most African gene pool of any country in the Americas, with over 90% of the gene pool of the entirety of the country being of sub-Saharan African origin, while other French Creole speakers in the Caribbean, such as on Martinique, having considerably more European extraction. The Papiamentu-speaking Creoles of Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao are really like no other, as appearance is highly variable, but most residents are a mixture of European, African, and Native American genes, with the European component coming mostly from the Portuguese, Dutch, Spanish, and English. Because of the island chain's unique history being passed around by many European powers during a relatively short time period, but ultimately ending up as a dependency of the Netherlands. In the Indian Ocean off the coast of Africa, the Mascarene Islands consisting of Reunion, Mauritius, and Rodriguez, sometimes expanded to include Chagos and Seychelles as well, are unique for speaking dialects of a French-based Creole known as Bourbonnais or Mascarene Creole, despite the fact that most inhabitants of the island chain do not necessarily identify themselves as Creoles, with the bulk of Mauritius actually being of South Asian origin. The Creoles of Mauritius, Reunion, and Seychelles are a highly heterogeneous group and a diverse gene pool of East African, European, South Asian, East Asian, Malagasy, and Middle Eastern DNA through centuries of migration, slavery, trade, and intermixing. And although multiracial Creoles remained a minority on the island of Mauritius, their language, the Mauritian or Mauritian Creole, has risen to lingua franca status in the country. Technically speaking, other groups that are not necessarily considered Creoles, but could have easily evolved to Creole status by the Creolization of their languages, are the Latin American Mestizos, whose paternal ancestry can be traced mostly to Southern Europe, while their maternal ancestry belongs to various indigenous peoples of the Americas, ranging from the Quechuas, Mayans, Aztecs, and others, and although Latino Spanish never evolved into a Creole language, it definitely does have its own unique sound, somewhat analogous to the differences between American American and British English, and a Spanish-based Creole, Palenquero, is spoken in northern Colombia near the Caribbean coast by a few thousand people today. So had the mestizo population crafted their own Creole language over the hundreds of years, this would make them the largest Creole population on the planet by far. Although less pronounced today than in the past, black Americans have also become extraordinarily close to creolizing American English, borrowing aspects of their original West African languages in their speech when they were brought across the Atlantic, and some linguists have argued that some extreme forms of AAVE, or African American Vernacular English, is divergent enough from American English to be called its own Creole language, seeing how mutual intelligibility is debatable in some cases. Many of the multiracial Indo people of the Dutch East Indies of Dutch and Southeast Asian origin, or the Christangs of partial Portuguese origin, originally spoke Dutch and Portuguese Creole languages respectively, although over the years the Dutch Creole languages of Indonesia have gradually gone extinct, with the remaining speakers, if there are any, being extremely elderly and have not passed down the language to the next generation, instead with most Indo speaking Dutch, Javanese, or Indonesian as a first language. 
The Portuguese-based Kristang language is still spoken by a small minority of the Kristang community today, mostly located in Malaysia and Singapore. Although again, this unique language is falling out of favor in the community, especially in the younger generations, as English has proved to be far more useful in the international sphere. The Anglo-Indians and similar Eurasian hybrids did not develop their own Creole language, and so are not technically a Creole group, however being of such a diverse array of ancestries, including English, Irish, Scottish, and Welsh in terms of European extraction, and an even more diverse assortment of South Asian extraction, the modern Anglo-Indian vocabulary in India is quite unique, seeing how it mixes several British dialects into one, while containing loanwords from Hindi, Tamil, Bengali, and all other manner of Indian languages and even Portuguese or French. The Anglo-Indian dialects are as diverse as the gene pool, considering the highly fragmented, heterogeneous nature of the community, with a community of half a million being spread out across a country over ten times larger than Great Britain. And again, this is not divergent enough to be considered a Creole language, although given the right circumstances, could have easily evolved into one. So in conclusion, the Creole languages and peoples of the world are rather ill-defined at times, and although the history of such groups and languages may entail a plethora of emotions for various groups, they are no doubt unique in their own right. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the fascinating Creole languages and even more perplexing history behind the Creole peoples and the various definitions the term invokes around the world. And for today's poll, let me know which regional Creole group you find to be the most interesting. And as always, thank you all for watching. This has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.